<laughs> All right, hello you amazing hackers. Hope you're doing well today. I have some amazing subscribers here with me today. How are you doing, everybody? Hey, hey Red, this is first time talking to you. Nice, how are you? I'm pretty good, man. <laughs> so, uh, f can you guys tell me about what you learned this week in hacking? You know, just a bit of stuff. Uh, okay, so I'll start. Um, this week, uh, of course, as I mentioned in one of your tweets, I um, I I learned that you know everything behind a lo behind the login portal is not actually behind it. Yeah. Uh, so what it was, there was a login portal. I you tweeted that always brute force a login portal. I brute forced it. And I had uh, error logs and login logs. In the error logs, there were all the SQL errors, the system errors. And in the login logs, there were the email ID of people logging in and their IP addresses. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it I was get, a cool finding. You know, Thanks I do you. get a 10% commission for everything you find by my tweets, right? <laughs> just kidding. It just was kidding. VTP. Oh, damn it, damn it. Maybe they give a bonus. Who knows? <laughs> That's really cool, man. Yeah, I found one of those vulnerabilities as well a while ago. I found a huge vulnerability behind, like, um, there was as well a login portal and you had a search page and on the search page you could look into the documents and you could find, like, the personal details of, like, a whole lot of people. So let's see what Micro is streaming for us. These guys are um, practicing a little bit of, um, I think it's bash scripting. Uh, a little bit of Linux to, uh, stuff. It's really cool that we are doing this. By the way, we're we're doing this quite often in our Discord. We're just hanging out, watching streams together. Let's see what Sean is doing. By the way, if any, let's see, uh, Bridge, how was your week? Did you learn anything in hacking? In hacking or in gardening? Um, so, uh, <laughs> well. Mostly the things that I take from your videos and from what I've learned this weekend, because I, I spent it this weekend on Angular mostly. Uh, well, I take them because I'm a developer into my development cycle and in my unit testing. And yeah, uh, just like yeah, making unique, uh, unique uh, goods and uh, ju not not just taking um, yeah. Uh, Fuck! <laughs> I didn't find him. There. Just taking the IDs that the database creates for you, uh, that's iterating it. Yeah, that's quite important. So because yeah, we use a lot of APIs in our background with authentication, and if you just take the you, the the IDs that the database gives you, it makes it a, a lot less secure. So yeah, thanks for that. Uh, so um, basically, I'm shooting myself on the foot again. I'm teaching developers how to stop the bugs. So uh, when you join bug bounties, uh, I get less bugs, or I get lower priority well, at least. Boy, at you're least killing at me too. BMW. At least at BMW. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, um, I found one of those vulnerabilities with a UUID as well, with a unique uh, identifier. And I, it was going to be like a low vulnerability, but I was able to bump it up to a medium because I found an endpoint that displayed all of the UUIDs. So that's also a tip I can give you guys. Make sure your endpoints don't display all of the UUIDs. And I see Andy join us as well. Hey Andy, how are you doing, man? By the way, this is live, we're recording. <laughs> what? Yeah, we're just <laughs> recording like a session, chilling with everybody. It's really cool, man. People are streaming their screens and showing us what they're doing. Awesome. Well, I'm playing Valorant, so I won't share. <laughs> well, uh, just to jump in again on the IDs. Um, a way we address the problem of the IDs is um, what uh, comes to the website is actually uh, a daytime mixed with an ID. Uh, I think every hour, so yeah, every hour it changes for one ID. That's really uh, cool, that's man. That's a security wow. measure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's uh, heavy, but that's really good, man. Yeah. There is also daily or, uh, yeah, you could do it every minute, but every minute is a bit difficult for the sessions. 
but yeah, orally is quite manageable. So yeah, that's how we do it at the moment. Yeah, often it's a bit of a mix between how much costs do you want to sink into the complexity of your system versus what security you want to reach as well. And I think it's a really interesting equation to make. It's uh, it's one I have to make often at my day job as well. And uh, it's one I really like thinking about. Uh, how was your, did yeah. you learn anything cool in hacking this week, Andy? How was your week? It was a stressful weekend, isn't it? So, <laughs> you know, I've just been uh, doing OWASP top 10 um, challenges as they've been dropping in. Going to go and catch up on those now. Uh, and then obviously the CTF on Saturday. Um, not doing anything else. Took someone through a hack the box on Thursday last week. So yeah, it's been pretty good. Did you Keep crack it? It's been cool. Did you crack the box on hack the box? Yeah, I'd already cracked it. I was just taking someone through. Who's ah, just okay, sorry. So just giving them some hints. And... Yeah, that's cool that you help people yeah. as well, man. I really appreciate that. If anybody helps anybody else, man, that that makes me happy you know <laughs> i really yeah. appreciate you guys doing that for each other i see sean you're projecting something really cool on your screen can you tell us a bit about what you're doing can you hear me yeah i can hear you excellent man i'm currently working on the kenobi uh try hack me room it was on my to-do list so i'm uh, knocking it out uh, did you get four already or I'm still on the first steps, um, enumerating Samba shares at the moment. Ah, that's really cool. I really like the Samba vulnerabilities. In OSCP, they put a heavy emphasis on Samba vulnerabilities as well because it's such an old protocol, but people still implement it with default configurations, and it's so dumb that they do that, you know? <laughs> Especially the default config part. It's so vulnerable in its default state. All right, really cool. Rat, would you mind if I, I'd like to ask a question? Sure, uh, go ahead, man. Of course. Uh, so uh, earlier you said that uh, you found uh, an endpoint with uh, which disclosed all, all the UUIDs. Mm -hmm. So are you satisfied that being a medium? Um, I am. I really am because the endpoint disclosed all of the UUIDs, but the... Yep. Uh, IDOR that I found didn't disclose any personal information. If it okay. did, I would have gone like, if it would have been an invoice, for example, I would have preferred it to be high, of course, but it would have been automatically turned into a high. So that's something I want okay. to give the viewers as well. Anything that you find that doesn't disclose any personal information is, of course, going to be a lower vulnerability as well. Especially here in yeah. Europe, uh, Integrity is a company based in Europe and here they have a lot of companies that are based for in Belgium as some of their targets uh, and we have to abide by the Belgium law. That means that we have to have certain things like that in place. So uh, if you, yeah. for example, have personal identifiable information, they put a heavy emphasis on that due to GDPR laws. Um, and we have to abide by that. If you don't abide by those rules, you're going to automatically be giving a heavy fine. And of course, companies want to avoid that as well. So good yeah. question. So man. in light of this, yeah. Um, uh, okay. So in light of this, when uh, you are in disagreement with the triagers, like the severity was not as much as you expect. So how do you deal with it? Um, I accept it and I move on. It's basically as simple as that. Uh, I They will say, for example, it's a medium. If I don't agree, there's not a whole lot I can do unless I can prove otherwise, of course. But I have to say yep. that I personally know some of the in, uh, triagers on integrity. And they are really people that are very, um, how shall I put this? They are very modest. and Cooperative. They will, yeah, yep. exactly. They will always work with you. I've had some bad experiences with other triagers. I will not go into it too deeply because I don't like to hang out people's dirty laundry. But yep. um, for me, I just went into it for a while. I did that for like a really long time. I fought triagers, um, but I was wrong often as well. 
and now I see that, but I had one occasion where I really wasn't wrong. I was 100% sure that I wasn't wrong. Um, and I just fought it and I wasted so much time. I spent at least eight hours fighting that bug where I could have found other vulnerabilities. My yeah. time is very precious and I don't like to waste it on that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's cool. Really good question, man. Thanks a lot for that. Yep. So, um, I mean, especially as a beginner, you feel like sometimes you are being exploited because uh, you, you are new to this and you know your vulnerabilities might be listed as any and then they might get resolved. So, how do I deal with such things? That's why I was asking. Yeah, exactly, man. It's It can be super frustrating. And that's something you walk into a lot. I made this video a while ago about the great bug bounty hunter firewall. And yep. it's like, yeah. <laughs> I really... Apart from technical videos, that was something that I wanted to hear. Like, this is what you will definitely go through. And this yeah. is something you must face. Your first report is always going to be an NA or out of scope. But yeah, spitting truth. Awesome. Yeah, and especially since I also interviewed Coffee Junkie yesterday, and Coffee Junkie is somebody who came from a hack the box background, capture the flag background, like a lot of you guys, and he also said that it's really hard to transition. There are several hurdles that you have to overcome, so it was good to have that feeling confirmed as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, micro. Until you find your first bug. Yeah, exactly. You really man. feel you can't do this. I mean, for months I used to start burp and I used to think like, I'm not good enough. I should not do this. But after I find my first book, you know, at least it felt pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, man. That first bug is like, yeah, I finally did it. Yeah. But then you also realize that, I, at least for me, I didn't realize that the field w was so like all the vulnerabilities that you find you have to work really hard for people see like maybe a couple of hours um yep. they see maybe like a couple of hours of your work like maybe 10 hours to end into a vulnerability but what they don't see yep. is that you've trained for at least 100 hours to get the base knowledge well to said. achieve that vulnerability yep. so it's like oh you got yeah. 150 euros for like two hours of work yeah but bitch i also spent eight years working <laughs> exactly like i go through this this time too actually i joined twitter because all, everyone suggested that people share right ups there so you must be a part of twitter but you know there were tweets that people were being awarded multiple vulnerabilities they were finding multiple vulnerabilities uh, in a couple of hours so i always used to think man they are finding so much within a couple of hours and here i am finding nothing after months but the thing is they have trained themselves for a very long time that they are finding something so easily yeah exactly man and i think that's also where capture the flag comes a bit into play because i didn't like playing capture the flag uh, competitions until i did the Eno wars with the guys um that really helps me with bug bounty hunting now as well first of all because it gives me motivation again and for me motivation is super important like you want to do good for the group and that's what fire what brings out this fire in me and it really helps me i don't know like andy how did you feel during the ctf did you feel the same as me like a fire burning and yeah no so i, I was looking forward to attacking mm -hmm. but then because we couldn't get those services up that yeah. was like it was motivating to just keep going at it i suppose that was yeah, learning yeah. something new, thirst for knowledge, it was all good. Yeah, thanks um, again for uh, doing all that. It's like I wanted to attack as well. And we learned a lot about how these kind of CTFs work. Uh, by the way, guys, anybody who's watching, join our Discord be because Sean, the guy that you see up there, that guy, he's going to organize a King of the Hill for us as well. Uh, if you want to join, feel free to. There are some spots open, I think. Um, what did you think of the CTF, um, Sean? Did you like it as well as me? Did you also feel this fire burning to learn more? Because you also... You, yeah, definitely. I think you do a whole Sorry. lot of CTFs as well. So for you, it must have been like a completely new experience doing that kind of CTF. Yeah, well, 
you know, most of the time the main focus was getting those services up and protecting machines. Um, mm -hmm. Looking back, I wish we would have done more attacking, but um, I still had a lot of fun and learned quite a bit, so... Yeah, and one thing I also noticed is that every single thing that you could attack was like a web service, so it was really cool to see yeah. that. I wish we had have spent a little bit more time attacking as well, but what's really cool sure. about these competitions and what we didn't get to do is that you can submit your flags. There's a netcat listener on a server, on the game server, but you can, if you find a vulnerability, you can find a Python script for it and spray that vulnerability across all of the IP addresses online and see if they have a flag that you can exploit. And it's really, that what, that's what makes those kind of CTFs cool for me is like you can, now we know that we need to do some defense, get some services up. And it was really easy to doing Docker as well. So uh, that's also I, something I hope in, that other CTFs or other challenges um, that they implement that I really liked starting up our services with just doing a Docker Compose. Um, but one thing I didn't like about doing CTFs and that I still don't like about CTFs is the fact that you have this indication of, hey, here's a shiny, here's the place that you need to look or I'm just giving an example here, root.txt. No company is going to plan the txt file called root.txt, you know, you have to look through all of these possible services because that's also one thing I noticed is that they only had like six services or something. But in a real life scenario, you're going to have at least like 20, 30 services that you're going to have to sift through and you're going to have to know which service is the correct one. That's something I missed as well a little bit, and that's something I miss about CTFs in general. Um, I don't know if you have your mic on micro, but do you have any any f uh, feelings about uh, the CTFs versus the bug bounties? Uh, I don't think micro has his micro on, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I um, also would like to talk a little bit about um, like the try hack me rooms i really like things like that sean is doing right now you do a lot of try hack me as well um could you recommend a couple of rooms maybe for our viewers because you've done a couple now which one did you really like um the basic pen testing one was uh pretty nice uh it covers the basics um it's also a challenge so it, it's uh really not a lot of guiding you, you have to do a lot of critical thinking mm -hmm. and uh, I like that a lot also yeah. the one I'm doing right now Kenobi uh, okay core room you can do nice thanks for this um, the red primer rooms those are uh, really nice the red primer as well okay thanks man that's really cool that yeah. you do it as well um, like so easily I, I see you live on screen right now and you're doing it like a freaking wizard man seriously <laughs> well, thanks man that's that's really cool. I'm going to see what Micro is doing real quick. It seems like he's logged into his Kali machine right now. So I think he's doing Hello. some bash scripting. And that's uh, what um, I'm doing some I'm doing rework for my Python script. Ah Python. Oh, oh my god, I'm such an idiot that's Python. <laughs> I told bash scripting, but of course that's not bash. So man Yeah, like I'm trying to do some stuff. Can I ask you like as a complete beginner in bug bounty hunting you went from a complete beginner to somebody who's pretty adept at doing bug bounties you haven't found your first base vulnerability yet but i promise you that's just a matter of time how did you find your transition um well since i'm the one who did some ctfs in the past like it was kind of hard for me to actually adapt in a uh, bug bounty hunting but since you have some nice content, I, I was really, I enjoyed your content and I was, I had not, no issues to actually learn something new. Thanks, so, man. That's really cool. What, uh, what script? Like the, are... there is, sorry? Uh, sorry, sorry for interrupting. Oh, no, it's no problem. I was just going to ask what script you were reworking there. Uh, the one uh, which works uh, exactly like HTTP probe but it's uh, my version so oh, yes. it's a little bit faster the one that you sent and it's not 
Yeah, the one I sent you. Like it's um, it's now on GitHub, so you can share with your viewers. Excellent. So uh, the basic logic of, uh, behind this is like when you do your um, sublister mm -hmm. uh, scanning. So after that, you have only subdomains without HTTP, HTTPS. And instead of checking all of them manually, I build a script which will um, try to connect to HTTP and HTTPS, uh, which one respond with code 200. Uh, that uh, particular um, subdomain will get the uh, will get appended in a text file. So that's the basic logic behind it. That's really cool, man. Right now, yeah. Right now, I'm trying to implement the timeout, uh, the timeout user input handling, uh, preventing spamming while running the script because there is so much going on on the screen. So I'll try to minimize these. So that's pretty much what I'm trying to do here. Really cool, man. I'll drop a link to the script in the description as well. Thanks a lot for that. Hey, no worries. My pleasure. All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, everybody, for being in this weird thing that we're doing. I really enjoy it. Uh, we'll have some more talks like this later if the... Uh, of course, we'll have some more talks like this later. I'm always in the general voice chat. I really like chilling there. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. If you know what, if you enjoyed it, you know what to do. I'll see you later. Bye, everybody.